Oh, summer is winding down, and that's a bummer. Uh, but good news is we've got more uh, lithium ion uh, 280 amp cell battery stuff to work on. And uh, in this video, we're going to be working on cell balancing and trying to get the most out of our battery pack. Uh, so stick around. Glad you're still here. We are going to be uh, working on the battery bank some more. And uh, I've got a couple of couple of interesting things that I think a lot of people are doing and I've got one thing that I don't know that anybody's exactly doing so let's get to it so this battery bank has been in uh, service for about four or five days now uh, we used it on the uh, National Forest campground trip over Labor Day uh, if you want to see that video uh, maybe I'll put it in a card or something somewhere or just check out our channel it's a travel video and uh, we ended up using about 800 to 850 amp hours, which is the most I've ever pulled out of any ba battery bank ever. But that this battery bank has over 1100, I think it's 1120 amp hours total. Um, actually, I should really stop using the term amp hours because uh, to 12 volt people, that means something different than 24 volt people and still something different to 48 volt people. And are there other kinds of people? I don't know. For the time being, we'll keep using amps. Uh, at some point, I'm gonna do a rant video on amp hours. Uh, anyway, we didn't get all the capacity, but I also was not trying to get all the capacity. I think uh, I stopped discharging or I ran the generator when we were about 24 and a half volts. And I think the cutoff voltage is somewhere around uh, 20. At least that's what I'm using, 20 or 21, I forget. But uh, point is, we didn't use all the capacity. And in part because our our bank is not balanced. I never balanced it. Now, the, the parallel nature, being that this is 4P8S, so that means each of these uh, groups of four batteries are parallel together. Um, that does provide a certain amount of natural balancing, uh, but only by random chance for the most part. And one of the, one of these actually is a way out of balance than the other. And uh, I'll show that right here. If you're watching, uh, using the smart BMS app from our Dally BMS, you can see it's at about, uh, 3.6 volts and everything else is at 3.3 so that means we're not getting charged to the rest of it uh, now the thing that concerned me a little bit is uh, that same cell was the one that was getting low faster than the others so I'm worried that perhaps those cells are weaker than the others but it's a little weird because I have four parallel together how could all four be not so hot the only thing I can think of is when I was building this battery pack I was pulling them from the box and I would stack them all together in a group, I should have spread them out so that if one box was from a batch that wasn't so hot, it would be spread across multiple cells, which may get me in trouble and I may need to reassemble this entire pack, which I don't wanna do. So that is what uh, we're doing in this video is trying to balance this pack out. Now I do have my uh, trusty uh, lab power supply there, which I may get to and may use, but for right now, uh, I want to play around with this guy here. Uh, everybody is using these, all the cool kids, the uh, solar off-grid garage, or off-grid solar garage, whichever channel. The guy from uh, Austria, Argentina, Australia, he seems to be from everywhere. <laughs> if you're watch, then you know. Um, and Will Pros has also used these. Uh, what has concerned me, I think, in Will's video is his actually blew up. And I think he may have been in the same situation that I'm in. With a bigger battery bank, this works on pushing amps around from, from stronger cells to weaker cells. So if you have a great disparity in them, this thing's going to be working hard. So I want to be careful. Um, but anyway, this is what I'm going to try. And I'm going to monitor the cell voltages and just kind of see what happens. I've seen some great things. 
So I'm hoping for something great. Uh, if that doesn't work, we will use that and do that a little bit manually. But the reason why I'm not jumping to this right away is because I only have one cell that's high here, not um, you know one or two that's low. If that was the case, I'd probably jump right to that. Actually, what I'd really love is to be able to uh, um, like somehow just drain one of them. Actually, let's get a sense for which one that is. I think it's uh, cell group number six. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it is this one. Weird, I've been just kind of talking about this one and this is, it's cell group six that isn't so great. Hmm. Well, anyway, um, so what I'm gonna do is hook up these leads, but the way I'm gonna do that that's a little bit different than I've seen anybody else do it before, is I got these guys right here, and these are pretty cool. At least I think they are. So what these are is a spade connector with a, uh, like an inline connector here. And you just wrap this around a wire, crimp it, and it gives you your connection, but then you can put the, uh, spade end right in there. So it kind of does two jobs in one. I really like that. That's going to allow me to tap in to the BMS uh, balance lead extensions that I already made. All I got to do is just pop them in there wherever. I'll probably try and put them back there and then I'll just take the multimeter and read voltages off of it and work my way up and connect these uh, in order and it should be good to go. And then I'll, I'll re-verify on this plug as well so I don't fry that thing. That's the plan there, what I'm gonna do. Um, hopefully I don't hurt anything or myself or blow anything up. All right, so I've got uh, all those wires connected up, verified that they're in the right order with a multimeter there. And I figure I can uh, tuck all these back together and put them back there. Maybe wrap them in a wire loom wrap or something. Next, I think we're gonna hook this up. I'll probably just leave it right in that box for right now. Although maybe that's a bad idea. It might start on fire. Uh, I'll be right here. And you're gonna be here too because we're gonna do this on camera together. And hopefully, we're not gonna let out any magic smoke. Got the uh, multimeter there on the high cell. So we're gonna be able to see exactly what happens when I plug this guy in. But to make sure that this thing doesn't catch on fire, I need you to do something for me. I need you to click that like button, everybody together. Come on, you can do it. It'll keep the magic smoke away. Uh, all right. All right, there's a light on on it. That means it's running. And nothing is happening thus far. That's probably, oh, there it goes. It actually dropped. Look at that, it's working. Now I'm only pushing about three amps into that and I'm controlling that through the uh, digital voltage current control setting, the DVCC in the uh, Venus OS. Wow, look at that thing go. It's really leveling things out. Well, I'll be. I do want to protect this somehow. I don't really want to leave that, although it has some screw mounting holes. All right. Uh, okay. All right, I got uh, that rainbow of wires hooked up there. I know it looks a little bit like a mess, but I figure I attached them all right there and then I can put that board. Oh, let's do it over completely. All right, so I've got uh, all those wires connected up, verified that they're in the right order with a multimeter there. And I figure I can uh, tuck all these back together and put them back there. Maybe wrap them in a wire loom wrap or something. Next, I think we're gonna hook this up. I'll probably just leave it right in that box for right now. 
Although maybe that's a bad idea. It might start on fire. Uh, I'll be right here. And you're going to be here too because we're going to do this on camera together. And hopefully we're not going to let out any magic smoke. Uh, to keep... Okay, so to keep... Here, let's do something else here. Okay, so um, got the uh, multimeter there on the high cell. So we're gonna be able to see exactly what happens when I plug this guy in. But to make sure that this thing doesn't catch on fire, I need you to do something for me. I need you to click that like button, everybody together. Come on, you can do it. It'll keep the magic smoke away. All right. All right, there's a light on on it. That means it's running. And nothing is happening thus far. That's probably, oh, there it goes. It actually dropped. Look at that, it's working. Now I'm only pushing about three amps into that and I'm controlling that through the uh, digital voltage current control setting, the DVCC in the uh, Venus OS. Wow, look at that thing go. Huh. It's really leveling things out. Well, I'll be I do want to protect this somehow. I don't really want to leave that, although it has some screw mounting holes. Um, I want to put it on something that's a little less flammable. Or at least readily flam. Here, here's what we're gonna do. I just happen to have this piece of uh, three-quarter inch plywood there. We'll leave it on that. That's a even uh, a little moist. This is on a common bus bar rail here, so uh, connectivity shouldn't be an issue. And wow, just in that couple of minutes, there it goes. 3.621. I'm kind of expecting, which wire would that be? That would be this green one? Are you? I'm not feeling any heat in the wires. I would think it would need more current, but maybe not. All right, I think that'll about do it for tonight, but we will check in uh, with this project a little bit later tonight and probably tomorrow before we wrap up the video. Thank you for all those uh, thumbs up. Uh, definitely kept that from starting on fire, so thank you, appreciate it. and. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll check in here in a little bit. They say it takes a, uh, a big man to admit when they're wrong. 
and uh, I'll do you one better. How about it takes a uh, big man to admit when they stripped a stud? Turns out that uh, stud or terminal, whatever you want to call it down there, uh, I had accidentally stripped it out when I was installing this bus bar because um, I noticed that um, this bolt was just a little bit loose. I don't know, I was just in here checking. I figured I'd check all these and that one was a little bit loose. Uh, so I was able to put a little bit of a longer bolt in there. You can see there's a couple of different sizes here that I have, so I ended up cutting one to be the exact perfect size that it needed with an angle grinder. Um, and that was able to bite into the threads that were left. I must not have been engaging with as many threads as I thought. But I do that, and all of a sudden the voltage on this bank right here just drops. So that means this cell right here was undercharged significantly. Um, so, one, this thing does a really good job because it was fighting uh, only having three cells in this bank. And now I'm putting 20 amps into it and it's still only at, uh, well, 3.356 for that particular cell. And the rest of the bank is about even. So, uh, I don't know what to tell you there other than be careful with these aluminum terminals, kids. They can strip. So I don't know that it really makes sense to do a whole lot more in this video, uh, being that now the battery bank is pretty well balanced. It's almost in perfect balance, in fact. Um, I think we might just leave this one here. And then I would say probably our next video is going to be a full capacity test. I need to see, can I get a full 1100 amp hours out of this battery bank? If we can, we're good. And be rest assured, uh, anyone that buys some of the leftover cells that we have, uh, like I said, we've got 20 more or 28 more cells I need to try and get rid of, uh, that they are in good shape. And so far, if this bank used 800 or so amp hours, and I was starting to see some voltage dip, that makes sense now because I only had three cells, three good cells on one. Well, they were all good, but three cells connected, actually drawing power on the one uh, main parallel grouping there. So I think we're probably looking pretty darn good. Uh, anyway, uh, if you wanna see that next video, definitely subscribe, leave me comments below. Um, I've got nothing else for you. Uh, keep it right here and I love hearing from you guys. Thanks.